One of the great parts about using Barcada is the amount of visibility you will get from a single point, which is command. Doesn't really matter how many sites you have, how big they are, or whereabouts in the world they might be placed, uh, but just by logging in into commandvercado.com, you'll be able to interact and get information about your system. So this video is about the types of reports you will get if you choose to go down the Vercada access control route. Just to summarize, the basic ways of understanding what's happening is either by clicking on a particular door. So this is where if you have a Vercada camera or cameras paired to it, you'll also get visual confirmation of all the below events. This is granted, rejected, door held open, door forced open, schedule change, lockdowns, tailgating, fire alarms, triggers, etc. Or click on any particular user. This shifts the visibility from looking at a door to looking at a particular user and whereabouts across your entire estate they have been or tried to access. All you need to do is again filter based on events and possibly look at, for example, access rejected. Now, this is quite cool because you can access this not only by looking at the door and clicking at the user or just directly going inside the users tab and directly clicking on the user themselves. So now let's look at more of the overview reports that we get with the system. And for that, we need to click on the well-named reports tab and you'll actually get to see the events across your entire infrastructure and filter based on the time range. We do have logs for the last year, groups and uses, doors, sites, or event types. So you can actually customize all this report. You can add things to it. You can even watch the event by clicking on the camera button next to the particular event. And at one click of a button, export it. So that will export it as a CSV file that you can search through at a later date. Recently also give you the ability to save reports. So I'll give it a name. And the main advantage of this is that once you save it, you'll actually be able to schedule it to be delivered to one or multiple recipients at a certain frequency of your choice. So if, for example, somebody in management or in people operations is asking for a report on who's been in the office for the last month, uh, you don't need to tell them to go through command and build their own reports. You can do that on their behalf and use this function to automatically send it to them at a certain frequency. These days, everything that you see in this report is also available via API. So if you're actually looking at ingesting this information programmatically and avoid any sort of emails and clicks, etc., you can actually use our open API and extract data that way. Last but not least, you also do have roll calls. So this will run a report in case of an emergency. All you need to do is create your templates, run it, and you'll see the people that have batched in at a particular location after a certain date and time. With roll call, you can mark people safe by either command itself. You might have it, for example, on a tablet in case you left the building and click on the people one by one as you see them or allow them to mark themselves safe by using what's called a master reader. So this is a reader that you will put in the emergency evacuation point, and that means that the employees need to badge into that reader to be marked safe. There are loads more improvements that will help you manage the building even better by giving you greater visibility into access control. Unfortunately, I'm not at liberty to discuss roadmap, but what I can tell you is that one, once they get released, they'll be free of charge. So you'll be able to use them straight away. And two, if you're interested to staying up to date and knowing when they get released, you should either check our website or subscribe to my channel.